Well, the Asian Development Bank is encouraging developing countries in the region to strengthen their disaster resilience. In its Asian Development Outlook, the bank said the region is particularly vulnerable to natural disasters and that the risks and costs are rising. I spoke about that with Yasayuki Sawada, the ADB's chief economist. But first I asked him about the risk to developing Asian economies from the U.S.-China trade dispute. According to our assessment, uh, Asian Development Outlook 2018, Chinese growth will slow down uh, this year 6.3%, and next year 3.1%. Although more than 6% is uh, really high, um, uh, if we look around the globe, but still we see uh, this moderation. This um, uh, slowing down Chinese uh, growth is mainly driven by global business cycle. Uh, developed economy, uh, US, Eurozone, Japan, uh, growth rate is uh, moderating over time this year, next year. So that's uh, um, a reason behind. Um, but admittedly, um, ongoing uh, US and China trade tension, that's also contributed this uh, slowing down. Although, according to our data analysis, uh, using uh, uh, input, so-called input-output table uh, to capture whole uh, global value chain, supply chain network, how that affected by uh, 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 tariff measures in both sides of China and the US. Uh, but according to this uh, um, con con uh, quantity assessment, um, likely impact is negative, but magnitude is almost zero. So. I, I think uh, Chinese growth uh, slowdown is um, uh, mainly can be attributed to ongoing uh, global economy slowing down. So from that report, what are some of the other trends that are either giving you cause for concern or, or cause for hope in this outlook? Uh, in the longer horizon, medium term and longer term, I think uh, Asia has been repeatedly affected by disasters triggered by natural hazards and uh, disproportionately if we look around the globe. So I think uh, uh, these disasters uh, driven by natural hazards, how to building up a resilience against these disasters. I think that's a really a big challenge in medium term and long term. So in terms of infrastructure and investment, what is the ADB focusing on at the moment? So ADB, um, um, on average, um, uh, last year, ADB funded uh, 20 billion US dollars um, a loan program uh, to our developing member countries. and. Um, Majority or, or uh, a larger proportion of this uh, 20 billion US dollars uh, allocated to uh, uh, physical infrastructure, energy sector, uh, as well as the transport uh, sector. And uh, because um, energy and transport, as well as the water and other uh, physical infrastructures, are really a basis or blood of uh, economy, so I think uh, this is very important to fill in the gap of uh, investment in infrastructure. And according to our uh, assessment, um, 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 whole developing Asia and Pacific region, in order to continue its growth momentum, by the way, uh, Asian growth can explain more than 60% of global growth. So Asia is really an engine of global growth. In order to continue Asia's this role and also uh, um, uh, maintain a poverty reduction trend in the region, as well as uh, achieving um, a global climate goal in both uh, mitigation and adaptation, uh, we need to invest 1.7 trillion US dollars per year over the 15 years horizon of a uh, sustainable development goal. So, and, and then uh, on the other hand, actual investment is around the 1 trillion US dollars. So 0.7 or 0 0.8 uh, trillion US dollars per year that investment gap exists. So I think uh, it's really important to fill in this gap. The ADB play a critical role to facilitate more private investment and more government uh, engagement reform to expand the public investment infrastructure.